Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily chat. Um, today's episode, episode is number 712. It's getting along with it. 712, easier. And topic today is, ladies, how not to lose him unless... Dot, dot, dot. Um, tips for, for dating successfully. I think that's what I call the title. Something like that. I'll explain what I mean in a moment. And by the way, I already know I'm going to do another one tomorrow, the other way around, for men about how not to lose her. So I thought I'd start with the ladies first. So this is for the ladies intentionally, but men, you can listen up because you might be learn some things as well. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. Um, and I do do these every day. My name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't figure that out already. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and passionate champion of the divine feminine. I'm also a relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And being a passionate champion for the divine feminine, these talks were inspired over two and a half years ago. Yeah, about two and a half years ago now. Called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So right now we're at episode number 712. So quite a few of these have been done. And I'll tell you where you find the brief plays for these at the end of the broadcast. And this is a Facebook Live, by the way, in case you're wondering first. And also it's not... Um, it's Facebook Live first. I'll give you the links about to find that and everything else in the replays afterwards. So in case you're wondering why you can't see the comments, it might be on the replay. It might be on YouTube when you're seeing this. So if I do see comments, I'll respond and repeat them so you know what I'm saying. Anyway, topic at hand today is, ladies, how not to lose him, in parentheses, unless dot, dot, dot. What, uh, tips for dating successfully or more successful dating. The reason why I put the unless in the middle of that is because I'm going to give you some caveats of reasons why you would not want to keep the guy. So it's not just about how to catch him. It's not about how to release him, using some fishing terms, although I'm not talking about catching and releasing as part of the real way of dating. So, first of all, uh, this is going to sound so simple. Hmm. Don't be desperate. The most, and, uh, the, and by the way, some of these I'm teaching now are going to apply for both sides of the gender because there are men who act desperate as well. So, ladies, when you bring a desperate energy, you're felt as being needy. And for most men, that's really creepy or uncomfortable, just to be transparent. It's better off that you have a sense of... Um, receptivity versus neediness. And I'll, I'll break that down more as I go along. Because one of the biggest challenges that women, I think, face a lot of time, especially though I haven't dealt with quite a few clients on this, is they haven't learned how to really trust themselves enough to not need a relationship. And that's a whole other conversation. But what happens a lot of times for women is they want, they feel like, especially, especially when they're in that period of time up when the clock is ticking loudly before they get to the point where having kids is no longer available. I, I know a lot of women who have gone through a lot of challenge with that one. So that's that's a part of that, that challenge time because women are feeling like they have a, a closing window opportunity so they must grab a guy to have a baby with. I also have some friends who had babies in their 40s when they were single because they got a donor. So that one strict rule is not necessarily so strict anymore. But the, the overarching piece... Um, oh, hi, hi, Mary. So thanks for not wearing the same color shirt two days in a row. I... I I do do my desk to rotate my shirts every day, just to be, you know, look presentable. I actually, go, I actually have reordered my shirts a few times where I want to make sure they match the sequence I did in my Facebook Live, so they're always going through, it's just to be... <laughs> so I appreciate your comment about that. Yeah, my... <laughs> I do tend to wear different shirts every day, that's the intention. And, and just, just for those who care, I wear dress shirts during the week and then casual attire on the weekends, because that's my own personal thing. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. <laughs> totally off track. Oh, and uh, what, was, what else did you say there? Just checking what you said. Um, oh, trying to be sure you catch every, you can watch every show while with the listening, especially to update the dating scene. Yes, I'm glad you like that, Mary. Thank you for watching and hope this helps you. So again, first thing is, is please don't be so desperate. And again, most men, and I said that as most, because some men seem to enjoy it. I'll get to that part in a second too. Most men, when a, when a woman comes across too needy, too desperate, too hungry, it's going to scare other men off. Um, because a lot of times it's almost, well, let me be blunt, when you come across as needy and desperate, it's almost being ugly because the energy you're bringing across is so, so not who you really are, first of all. And secondly, it's from a place that is not just interested, it's almost like ravenous. And when you're in a relationship, you can have fun with the ravenous energy and sexuality, and I'll talk about that another time. But when you just met somebody, you bring that ravenous energy, that hungry energy, that neediness, it can be very desperate and very... Um, as I said, ugly, but very, very painful to be around. So men would run. So that's one thing. 
The second part, I said there are some men who do like it because they feel they can control it. And this is one of the things that I have an issue with, to say the least, where men who like to find women who are needy and desperate because they feel they can then dominate them, control them. And that's where a lot of women get into trouble in relationships, which is why I had that unless thing in there as well, because losing certain men will be a good thing. I'll put it that way. That's the first one. So second one, the other part that a lot of women do, and again, some of these apply to men as well. So some men are crying across as desperate as I mentioned. And, and again, as I said at the beginning, I'll be doing a talk tomorrow as part two, which will be from men, how to not lose the women, because there's a whole bunch of stuff about that I'll get into for tomorrow. So today, this is about women not losing men. So another part of this also is a spin-off from the desperation is don't believe that this guy is the only one you can have. A lot of women have got in the trap where if they lose this guy, it won't be any, there won't be a chance for another one. It'll be desperate, it'll be, it will suck, it'll be the end of the world sort of thing. No. The reality is I'm very aware is that for most of us, and I'm looking around at people I know in other thing, another, both clients and friends and colleagues, where relationships tend to become better each time, meaning that when you get out of a relationship, you tend to, to enter another relationship more aware, more educated, more conscious, and you find a partner who's elevated too. So this one you're, with, you're desperate to meet with, be with, I'm pretty sure isn't the best one you could be, actually be with. The best one you could be with, yeah, yeah, so this is it's wise. That the one you really want to be with may not be the one you're pursuing or the one that you're letting pursue you. Actually, there's another piece I'll get to, that's number three, I'm getting ahead of myself. So it really comes back to you loving yourself. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you're not coming from a place of, actually didn't explain it that bad, way better. Let me get back up a second. The desperation comes from not loving yourself, not caring for yourself, and not trusting who you really are. So that's going to be a thread that's going to play out throughout, I suspect. So desperation first, think is the only one second. Um, damn, what was there? there was a thought in there? It went. Let me come back to it. <laughs> that happens. Mm. All right. So <laughs> being clear, he's not the only one. That the one you're looking looking for. Oh yes. So part of that is, is to know what you really want. So many, I say women, but actually people, because this happens to both men and women, will basically make their choices from what's available versus what they really want. This is the one of the traps as well. So this is number three. I think it's a number, no, it's, I, think I'm, I think I may have missed number three, so it's maybe number four. If I remember what number three was, I'll come back to it, but I'm calling this number three for now. Excuse my numbering, it's messed up. This is the thing about doing spontaneous broadcasts without any script. They come out this way sometimes. So for a lot of people, again, men and women, when they're looking to date, they'll go through the pool that's available versus holding to the vision they really want. Meaning that a lot of people don't think that there's anything beyond what they can see right in front of them, like within arm's reach, so to speak. So their dating um, choices always feel limited to that mindset because you're only looking within the next like three to five feet, so to speak, energetically speaking. Whereas the right person you may want to be with may live in the next town or the next day will shop where you are. But by being so caught up in the desperation, which is again back to number one, and the thinking that you have a limited pull to date, to date from, you're shooting yourself in the foot and in the heart to not get what you really want. So first of all, loving yourself, being fully whole to yourself and not being desperate is a key. And then knowing what you really want, independent of what's going on out there, because that's the other part. For a lot of people, again, men and women, because both do this, sometimes you paint your picture of what you want based on what you see out there, rather than getting clear about what you want inside first, and then looking out there to see what will match that. See, it's backwards. So a lot of the challenge we face, see, a lot of people, well, a lot of people will choose, will not call it a challenge, but they just think they're limited, is they don't really get clear about what they really do want. They'll settle for less than they want because they're settling for what they can see and what's available versus holding true to a vision that will take them where they really want to go. So that's a powerful piece right there. And again, this one's for both genders. I'm realizing that I'm teaching points here that apply to both men and women. C'est la vie, this is intentionally for women first. So let me see what is a women specific one too. Oh yes, I mentioned about the clock ticking, so that's desperation again. Um, that's number three. Number four. And by the way, if you have any ideas yourself you want to contribute, please put them in the comments and I'll include them as I go along and explain them perhaps more if you give me some good insights. Not that I'm saying you have to do that. This is, this is my um, run. So, um, so again, desperation, unclear vision, self-support, self-worthiness, 
Number four is there was a piece in there that keeps coming back. It will circle around. Um, so Mary, what's that? You're, you're tall. It's important that the guy is taller. Someday, someday I want to dance and shorter won't do. Does that limit your pull to impossible? It may seem trite, but have a physical characteristic. When relationships have more to do with spiritual and personality issues. Okay, so <sighs> having an intention of what you'd like to be with is good, but being available to something more than that is also important too. So if you say you want to marry, so say you want to be with somebody taller, there may in fact be plenty of men out there, at least the one you want to be with amongst them, who is in fact taller than most other men who is making you feel more petite. I've seen relationships where, it, as in fact, the woman's been taller than the man. I'm not saying it's the only way to do it, so I'm not saying you have to limit your pool necessarily, because you might find somebody who is shorter than you that fits your pool, or sorry, the same height as you that fits your pool ideally. That all the other characteristics line up. But it also, the well, let me say this: the benefit of looking for an extra tall man because you're a tall woman is he will stand out in the crowd. <laughs> so, unless he's a bunch around a bunch of many tall men, which is not that often, he will be very visible to you. So to be let me back up a second. To be ready to have what you really want is a key. I've talked about it before in one of my courses that when you get clear about your vision, what you really want, it can be very specific, but it's also open-ended. So it's not going, if you must fit into this box here to be the right person. It's this is what I'm gonna start with and I'm open to possibility. So what you learn is that there are certain things you will have as, I call them green flags versus red flags, where those things must be the way they are to make that work. Like they may it must be perhaps they must be loyal and they must be drug free and they must not smoke and they may be made to be vegetarian for example. So oh you you love your height now so you don't need to feel treat okay I yeah I understand that but you want to be around a man who you don't feel you're towering over him as I'm guessing from what you said and so what I'm saying is that that quality list of what you're looking for can include and this is the thing to feel that the man is is so energetically keyword big enough to hold the space for you so you don't so, so that you feel supported taken care of and safe and it could be a man who's shorter than you if that was the criteria you're using so if you want physical height because you want to feel that shorter than him that's all possible too so it's okay to put those things on your list as things you must have so again green flags must have versus deal breakers which are red flags so it's okay to include those things but also be open so that's the things being open at the top so it's always saying like this is what i want or something better for the highest good type framing. So you're actually making it possible open to where it can be even better than it already is. So that's that's another key. So yes, you can have that, I believe. So that was number four, I think. I was doing three or four. Clear about your vision ahead of time. What was the other one? Oh. Well, there's, two, there's a part A and part B of this one. One is about having a clear, uh, no, I'm going to say another way. When you feel that, yes, green flags, that, that's one of the things I talk in my coursework is green flags versus red flags. So you're very welcome, Mary, glad you like that. Yes, you can have that too. <laughs> you're very welcome. Um, in response to that piece, I was going somewhere with this. Damn, this is the challenge of interacting with people on the screen. Sometimes my mind goes off track. One of the challenges about men in, being a man is that we tend to be very single focused, which is one of these opportunities to expand. So I have to remember to include things and remember where I was. And it went out of my head, come back, come back. <laughs> Excuse me while I just try and recall what I was thinking. It was in there. I remember very clearly what it was. I, sorry, I, very, I remember it clearly it was there and I can remember what it was that I was thinking. Okay, first of all, as I mentioned earlier about being in a place where you think this is the only one, you've got to stay to the one you're very present with. So be open to possibility again, green flags, what you really want to have that fits for you and that actually lines up is a, is a key thing too. The other piece is, um, hmm, I'll say acting like you're settling, but it's more than that. There are some people, and again, this is applying to men as well as women, there are many women out there, especially, who may look to having a guy that is not as perfect as they want, because they have this rule in their head about perfection. And so they judge what they're being with as something less than that, and they feel like they're settling. Now, they're on the other side, there are women who actually do settle because they don't think they deserve the best, which is the inverse of that. Either way, it's messed up. 
because as I said earlier, when you get clear about what you really want, you can have it as long as you're not attached to what's just available because that's the reality you're living in now. See, this is the thing. The perceived reality you're in right now isn't where your vision lives. Your vision lives at a higher place. So if you know where you want to go and you know what sort of relationship you want to attract and what you're looking to create, you need to be willing to expand your vision beyond the reality you're living in right now. Because for some people, that reality they're living in is so constrictive, const constrictive, right, and claustrophobic that they're not available to see a bigger vision. So for a lot of my clients working with this, in the course I have, the, the online course I have called Attract the Man You Want, versus it isn't saying attract the man that's available. <laughs> it's attract the man you want. Meaning that your vision is bigger than your environment you're in right now. So having willingness to stretch your imagination, your mindset, your belief, to encompass and see a vision bigger than what you experience currently is part of what shifts your reality and shifts your position to something greater and better. Because the thing is, we are, as human beings, often limited in our thinking based on what we see around us and don't think there's any possible beyond that. The reality, though, is, I keep using reality a lot, but that's what the word is, our true reality is that we make up things as we go along. We have the ability to manifest things that are outside our current frame of reference all the time. I've seen things happen more on times in my life than I can count where I was open to the possibility of something bigger, better, more unusual than I expected, and it showed up and it didn't match my current reality. So my only had to expand to encompass it. This is actually a way of life beyond relationship, but it's a key thing to have understanding of because when you start to get the understanding that your life is not limited by your current circumstances, then your life can change. This is becoming a life coaching teaching. Okay, I was tempted to give it about relationship, but apparently some of these keys I'm teaching are beyond that framework. They include other things. <sighs> Say lovey. But the thing about it, again, and this is, I mean, the thread that I'm putting through all the way through this, from the beginning to this, is that we tend, as people, and I guess I'm including myself now in this one, where we look at the world through the lens of what's in the in the 3D reality we have right, the 3D reality we have right now, and we don't see beyond that, or even entertain a possibility of what's beyond that, which is limited to what's in hand. So we act desperate, we act needy, we think we've got to put up with what we have right now, so we settle. And the reality is we can have a vision that is so much more than that. We can be open to possibilities and to available magic, yes, magic, that is way beyond what we believe. Because we believe what we see oftentimes rather than actually believing, rather than seeing what we actually believe that's bigger than that. Sorry, let me try that again. There's a quote, I'm trying to misquote uh, Reverend Michael from Agape. He talks about that when we stop um, believing what we're seeing, we start seeing what we're believing. It's very different. We, our reality will change because what happens is we see the reality around us and we believe what that is. But when we start believing a bigger reality, then we start seeing it show up in our world. That's the difference. So was that Mary Sonny Reaper saying, your, your life is not limited to by the familiar past, even in relationships, you don't know what, what you don't know. Your life is not, well, it's true. Your life is not limited by a familiar past for nobody, none of us are, but we tend to write our fencing around what we've experienced before to make sure we don't go outside of that because that's the belief we have. So even in relationships, you, you don't know what, you don't know what you don't know. Well, if you're talking about the, um, oh, the, there's, a, there's a quadrant diagram, I forgot what the title of it is. That basically, you, you're in a place where you don't know what you don't know first, then you get to a place where you start knowing what you don't know. Then when you learn, you become aware and you start knowing what you know. And then what happens is you become so um, automated, you actually, you actually don't even know what you do know because you're doing things automatically. Actually, that's not, that's comp excuse me, that's the conscious competence. I'm, I'm misquoting a quadrant. But yes, when you don't even know what's available, then you won't even be, you've got to be open to possibility. So the thing about it is when, you know, when you're in a place where you think you know everything, you're trapped. So yes, staying open. So what the truth is, is to focus on knowing that what you know is only the beginning and knowing there's a step or three or 10 beyond that that's possible. And if you hold that space of being open to possibility beyond what you know, then what can happen is the things beyond your knowing can come into your life. Now that's a, that's a teaching for everything in life, not just relationship. But I wanted to make sure that was in there too. I've got, I've got a few things brewing now for the male side of this for tomorrow, because I'm going to do another broadcast tomorrow, which is the flip side about how men don't have to lose women. A whole bunch of stuff about behavior and respect in there. So tune in tomorrow for that one. I'm going to see if there's anything else for today for my perspective on women not lose, how to not lose men. Oh, 
here's one. It ties in a bit to, to one I talked about earlier about settling. Be willing to lose a man who doesn't respect you. The biggest thing I've seen that frustrates me is watching women date men who don't respect them. So as a invitation, not teaching so much, is I do invite you to really focus on choosing men that respect you. And it's challenging, I know, because there's so many men out there who don't respect women, which is one of the things that bugs me a lot, which is why I'm going to talk about that tomorrow, man, the broadcast. But for a lot of women out there, I know they've had to think, because again, they think they settle. So they settle for less than they deserve, and so they settle for men that don't respect them. Don't do that. I talked a few days ago about being single as being a healthy choice, how when you love yourself fully, you don't need to be out there for a relationship that doesn't work for you. So you don't need to settle for less than you deserve. You can be open to possibility for magnificence and for joy. So for that, I'm encouraging you to hold tight to what you really believe, to be open to possibility, and to actually be willing to have something magical happen that's beyond your even understanding now. That works. A um, couple of things I want to drop in the comments as well. I do have a course I mentioned called Attract the Man You Want. I'll put the link in the comments for that for you ladies who are looking to get some um, tools that will help you manifest the vision of what you really do want to have in a relationship. I'll also put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk if you have any questions, thoughts, want to get some guidance towards what you really want to have in love and relationships. And also put the self-love practice in there because for many people, studying with self-love is the best place to get anchored in truth for loving yourself first before you go into any relationship of any sort. So those that will put in the comments. And again, this is, this is my Facebook Live video every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page. The replay is going to my business page and onto YouTube, so I'll give you where you can find that stuff. So again, if you want to join me live, it's 5 p.m. Pacific time at Barry Selby on Facebook. The replays go to barryselby.author on Facebook, where's the my business page. That's the one with the blue shirt, by the way. And then I've also got a YouTube channel called Barry Selby as well. That's all my, all my social media is my name, Barry Selby. And on there, oh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. On there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. And in there are all these broadcasts. So all 710 plus this, sorry, 711 plus this one, will be out there. this one will be out there shortly as well. And you can watch my replays anytime you want. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, I put the link in the comments, the three, the three links in the comments I mentioned to help you get more love in your life the way you really want it and to get the relationship you really desire. And um, I think that's about it. If you have any thoughts, comments about this topic, let me know. I'd love to have more input as well. And if you want some more help, I've got stuff to help you with. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow for more fun and games. This time, tomorrow will be about the male perspective about how not to lose the woman. That should be juicier too. Um, I think for being with me as always. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.